Hey guys, today I wanted to make a small video to talk about the mixer brush. It's a very cool tool and not everyone knows what the different options do. So let's take a look at it. The first thing is you can access the mixer brush by right clicking on the brush tool and selecting it down here. Then let's check the sampling color option. If you click on the arrow next to the square, you can see there's a load solid colors only option. If you have these turned on, like I currently do, it's going to simply sample whatever color, like a regular brush does. But if you have this option disabled and you sample, you're going to see in the preview that um, it's basically grabbing a section of your canvas. And that depends on how big your brush is. So if you make your brush larger and you sample, it's going to sample a much larger area compared to if you have a very small size brush. So this is pretty cool. But then the next option is this square here, which is the auto load feature. And what does the auto load feature does? If we make our brush have very little paint on it, so like a 5%, and then we paint, you can see our paint after a first stroke rounds out. But if I now try to make a second stroke, nothing happens. That's because if you have that option on, you have to resample the color and then put down a second stroke. Resample, put down another stroke. Okay, so if you have this option turned on, you can simply continue placing down strokes without the need to resample the color each time. So depending what you need, you might want to have this on or off, but usually you might want that option to be on at all time. The second option is clean brush. So if you're using the mixer brush with some wetness and to like smudge some paint around, the auto clean option, it's gonna clean off your brush after each stroke. And this is important, it only works when wetness is not 0%. If you see, I do it now and nothing happens pretty much. And also it works only with load solid colors only. So if I now remove this option and add some wetness to my paint, you will see in the preview from the clean color, it suddenly becomes dirty, you see? I don't have my pure color anymore. And this is dependent on where I'm brushing at the moment. So this is to clean it. And you see, as soon as I re-enable it, it's gonna clean out my color and go back to what I sampled before. So pretty important. Now we have some presets here. You can see in this drop down menu, we have dry brushes, moist, wet, and very wet. This is just a combination of this option here to the right. So if you want to play around and see what different thing um, feel like, you can just try different presets and see for yourself. But then it's pretty important to know what all the different options do in case you want to mix and match and have a custom effect that is not into the preset. So what what's the effect of wetness? You can see at 0% we have a very regular, uh, like a normal brush, nothing really different going on. But as soon as we introduce just 1% wetness, it starts smudging the paint around, like really big time, even with just 1%. So. This is pretty good when you're trying to mimic a more oil traditional kind of effect. And of course, the more you increase the wetness, the more this mudging of paint is gonna drag around your paint on the canvas. Then, like we already seen, there is the load. Load is simply how much paint you have on your brush. If you have 100%, you're never gonna really run out of paint. Um, but if you have very low uh, percentage, you'll see that after even a medium sized stroke, you're gonna run out of paint, so you have to start a second stroke. Then mix only works when you have wetness enabled. So for example, if you have 10% wetness and you start painting, you see it still puts down the color, but if we instead increase the mix to like 100% and we sample the color, it's actually only going to smear the paint around it's not gonna apply whatever color we have picked. See, because mix is really high. And of course, 
any value in between it's gonna do apply a little bit of paint and a little bit of smudge so play around with that and see whatever effect you like then we have flow and flow it's basically the same as we have in the regular brush where um, reducing it, it's similar in effect to the amount of paint but instead of like running out over time it simply simply mean that you have less pigment on your brush at all time so the stroke is not going to end it's going to continue but it's going to output less and less paint see it's almost like a glaze so very end effect but be aware that it works differently than load and this is pretty much it we have uh, the stabilization option and the sampling on layer but that's the same as all other tools that have the same thing and there are several ways you can use this um, this tool for example it's really interesting when you don't sample color and you have this variety to just introduce some colorful textures and it works really nicely with uh, photo textures if you have to like have some foliage and you sample the foliage and then you just dot it around it has a very nice effect but also you could do some fairly well not crazy but very interesting thing where you could just create a little sphere of sorts like so and then you can grab your brush remove the load sample color and then try to sample sphere it would have been better if you make this thing on a new layer actually okay so now you can see your sphere appear in the preview and now when you paint you're gonna have this kind of weird 3d effect which is pretty cool i mean i'm not sure what uses you might have for this but i'm sure you can find something cool and interesting to do with it I hope this video has been helpful for you guys and as usual if you have any questions please let me know in the comments or if you have suggestions for future videos please also let me know in the comments and with that said I'll see you next time.